Hey, y'all. It's uh, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and I am here at my house on the patio on December 11th and here with a couple of guests. I've got uh, William and Dimitri, and uh, nice. the the two of them have some very interesting, uh, really cool blooms, actually. So we're, we're going to have a kind of a show and tell, and um, well, let, let's just jump into it. Dimitri, what you got? What I got is, well, I know this is Gigantia or Gigantia or however you want to pronounce it. So here it is after about three years now. That's really cool. It is. And if the camera would focus, it would be even better. But oh, that's so nice. I'll send you some pictures. I was able to successfully pollinate this one, so I'm very excited for this cross. I'm not gonna tell her right now what it is. But yeah, it's, it's pretty decent. Only 10 blooms, and as you can see, there's... Or, God, uh... don't snap that spike. I'm like, don't <laughs> yeah. snap it! Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> I can take some beating. But yeah, it's uh, it's one of these files that just keep on blooming from the, from the tip. Oh, so it'll keep going after this. Yeah, um, the temperatures really dropped, so we aborted quite a few blooms, but there's hope. As long as the, the tip is staying green, it's going to keep going. So there it is. It's pretty, pretty big flower. It's very waxy, very thick. It, it looks really waxy and thick. and mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, they truly are. Uh, and they, they smell very nice, kind of citrus. That, I think a lot of the summer blooming shall have. Is so, that yeah. that's a first bloom, right? It is a first bloom. It took about three years to get to this size. Uh, the biggest, it, it's not huge yet. It's just a young adult. So for for people that consider Gigantia, it's going it's to a have baby. some, not a baby, but <laughs> we definitely get a lot bigger. Yeah. As you can see that the yellow leaf is, was the biggest leaf by the time I got it. Oh, so I yeah, it made one, two, three, four, four leaves in the three years that I had it. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a leaf a, a year, a, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah, about it. But the leaves are getting very big. I remember last time we, I remember last time we talked, you were saying that uh, people don't, think that fowls need as much light as they actually do. I would imagine that one gets quite a bit. Uh, yeah, this one gets a lot of light in its natural habitat. Uh, it grows in Borneo. It was introduced in Europe in 1909, if I remember correctly, from Dutch collectors. Um, and at first, it was very hard for them to grow them properly because it likes it steaming hot and humid and very, very bright. Uh, it grows in the canopy of trees. And if I'm not mistaken, there's five different shapes, like from the different forests and areas in Borneo. Uh, and the, the one that I have is um, red dots on the white background. So it should be from Kalimantan genetics. You also have the one that start white but go golden, so the one that have less red, but more of a brown hue to them. So different areas yield different results in the flowers. But nowadays it's a bit hard to hard to know what the genetics are. How to tell them apart. They've all been crossed back and forth a few times probably. Yeah, yeah, but it's very interesting. Lots of different shapes. Like this one has very round flower uh, leaves, but some of them have much narrower and longer leaves. Mm -hmm. And all of all of these is indicating different genetic backgrounds, but yeah, it's it's nice to see now. This is a very popular species, and a lot of crossbred uh, crossbreeding has happened. And now the the plants are very strong, very proliferous. That's awesome. Uh, how? What's the maximum size of a gigantea? You know that that you would expect. Um, you have people that the. Urban legends say that it is about one meter, but one if leaf? someone, yeah, but no, no. In reality, if you get a specimen that is like sixty centimeters, is already a very, very big plant. You can expect something like fifty, sixty centimeters in a span of 
Oh, about 10 years. Wow. No, it's probably, yeah, this big. Okay. I, so I've very some, mature plants. I've seen some images of um, Frank Smith's collection over there at Kroll Smith, and he's just got kind of a row. Oh, yeah. Massive. Oh, yeah. It's, it's absolutely of, amazing. Yeah. I'll see if we can dig up a photo and, and show it. And uh, it, I mean, they, they, they're big. You know, it's Gigantia for a reason. <laughs> it's in the name. Yeah, it is for sure. Yeah. And I think a lot of our modern phalaenopsis that uh, we find in our, you know, supermarkets and our Ikeas, they've got Gigantea in the in the genetics, don't they? Yeah, spot on. Yeah, all the harlequin fell. That oh, is yeah. where they get their their speckled background. Okay. Speckled red dots on white background. Yeah, it is. That's where they get those speckles. Exactly. So do, do the different varieties need different conditions or... Or they all kind of grow under the same conditions? No, it's basically all the same. But it, it, I really didn't know that before. I, I've spoken with people that actually went there and sowed them in the field. Um, no, it's, it's just the same. But I didn't know that there were different. Yeah, not varieties per se, but different morphs, I guess, in a way. Yeah. So, so they forms. They're, yeah, they're, I guess if they're not described formally, then they're just forms and not subspecies yeah. or, or varieties, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's really not much in, not much, not much, sorry, in regarding subspecies of Gigantia. You have the normal form, the, the Alba form. And yeah. That's about it. So the Alba you... is definitely interesting, very sought after. Yeah. What, so, what are you doing to get, uh, to get this plant so big and, and get 10 blooms on your first spike and basically how are you caring for it? Um, after a lot of trial and error, I think that the most important thing this plant needs is very draining media that lets you water it very often. Mm. But it's, it's long overdue for a repot. It's a bit dry. Uh, but as you can see, it's just Lekka and it allows me to basically water it every day or every two days if I'm not lazy, if I'm lazy. Um, the, the, roots, uh, the roots have filled the entire pot. Wow. Hard to see behind the leaf, but um, this has a very extensive root system. And what you ideally want for this is, yeah, very draining media, a lot of food because it's a big plant that takes a lot of food hmm. and a lot of light, a lot of it. It's the phalaenopsis that, as far as I know, can withstand the most light. Basically, I have it full sun right now. Uh, wow. part, of, part of full sun in summer as well, not too much because it's definitely way too strong. But yeah, they grow in the canopy. So as you can imagine, it gets very, very bright. As long as you're able to cool the leaves with plenty of yeah, air, then exactly, they, can, they yes. can withstand so that. Very important. That's why uh, LEDs like I have in the background are super cool. Allows you to basically toast the plant without killing it. <laughs> so if you're if you're growing this one in shady conditions and in a in a pot full of sphagnum that's sopping wet, you're you're gonna kill it, huh? Uh. Um, depending on yeah, soaping wet sphagnum is never a good idea. I think doesn't matter what plant you're talking about but um they will grow in shady conditions they will grow bigger but they will not bloom correctly hmm. i have a couple questions one is does your uh pot there is it like the semi-hydro where you have a little reservoir at the bottom it is it is a daily daily pot that i just oh i see okay yeah i went the di white route and took a soldering iron and then just put a hole in it so uh -huh. okay it, it is a one liter pot okay and way too small for this plant all right and then the second question is when roots come out of the plant above the medium will they change direction and find their way into the medium yeah they are they well they kind of dried up because i kicked on the heat and it's very dry at the at the base but as you can see on some of these roots they're going down okay so they yeah it, it needs it's a plant that needs a lot of anchor because 
it's very heavy mm. and drinks it also drinks a lot so the roots just start here and then they grow inside the pot and they just find as much of an anchor as they can i see so yes I they do one, is one issue I've had with some plants is that the root will come out above the medium and then when it touches the medium, it will just stop. And I've been no, trying no, no, to... This one has a very extensive root system. Okay. So I think this is partly why it's a bad first species for people that are getting started in a phalaenopsis. That it needs, it really needs a big root system. So if your conditions are and your growing technique is not, not very... On point yet. Yeah, and you kill the root system, there's basically no recovery. Mm. With some species, with some plants, you can just start over like catacetum. Doesn't matter if you kill the roots. But with gigant gigantia, it's just it's just over, basically. Oh, that's interesting. If you you basically get one chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's I mean. There's a bunch of cattleyas like that, you know, Wakariana and Nobiliora, they won't bloom unless they have a massive, massive root system. I mean, you kill off a Doiana roots, that thing's toast the same way. Another high canopy uh, species that likes similar media, really. And, uh, you know, if you if you kill that root system, it's those things are just toast. Yeah, I think it's part of, yeah, really part of the reason why so many people have issues with them. Like you said, soapy, soapy sphagnum is not really a good idea, especially if your conditions are a bit on the cool side. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not a very hard species per se, but you have to you have to understand and know what you can and cannot do in terms of watering it. So you mentioned that you pollinated it, and uh, how long do you think until that that pod's ready to to go to the lab? And where are you going to send it? To myself. Uh, oh, I'm you're going to send it myself. Oh, nice. Yeah, I do have, I do devil. I, same thing, it's way overdue because I have too many things to do. But yeah, if you, if you can basically build a, a box, a sterile box, you can do it yourself. It's, it's fairly fun and easy. Um, Dragon Tia is it's fairly long, fairly long. I would expect like nine months. Yeah. And w will you uh, flask it with a, an immature green pod or you, will you wait for it to dehiss and open and then flask? Probably green pod because it's much easier. For people that don't know, green pod is basically you just take a pod that has not opened yet and the seeds in inside are sterile. So you can just scrape the insides and put it on flasking media and easy but when the pot bursts open you have to sterilize the seeds so you have a higher risk of killing the seeds and introducing cross-contamination uh, so I'll, I'll see but the green green method is very easier i, I remember that dustin from here but not had a, a pretty interesting series of videos where he he did kind of at home flasking with the mm -hmm. diy box is, is it is your technique going to be similar or have you kind of yeah this is what lines? i use yeah it's it's really similar to this one it's, it's a very good series i highly recommend it yeah definitely <clears throat> well let's uh Let's do a, a little bit of a topic change. I, I know, uh, William, you've got something over there next to your, your shoulder there behind you, kind of beside you, I guess. Well, what this, you got? What, what adventures have you been having with it? Uh, this is a Mormodia plant that was, it was awarded a couple years ago with a HCC and uh, I've let it go. Uh, and uh, this year it has 87 flowers. And so I was going to try to take it into judging. Judging was yesterday. 87. I, 87, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the judges told me that if, if they're all if they're not all bloomed out, it's really they're they're probably gonna pass on it and said and I said, okay, well that's okay. So that I looks like it's like three quarters open though, isn't it? Yeah. God, do I dare bring it over here? Yeah, three quarters, but they were just saying that. 
I don't know. There's still quite a few closed ones. And remember, this is a day after. So yeah. some have opened a little bit in the past 24 hours. But um, but yeah, I think it's big. It is pretty big. Yeah, so that's your question. whole room filled with the, the scent of the, those flowers. Uh, believe it or not, this one, the scent is pretty, pretty mild. It's just kind of like a menthol citrusy scent. And it's not really strong because there's so many flowers that you do smell it. It's like it's pervasive, but it's not strong. Like you, okay. you, it's like, hmm, I can tell there's something, but it's not, you know, really strong. But um, I, uh, I get a lot of questions about like, are you still watering this kind of stuff? And I personally will water this until the flowers fall off. Once the flowers fall off, that's when I will stop watering it. So it that's i just uh i like to keep the bulbs plump until it's completely bloomed out and then once that's done then i leave it alone until you know the roots are are well developed in may or june and uh it's just so huge you know the leaves on it come out this far so it's always a question of do i want to let this keep going cuz it's so easy to divide and you can just grow it from one bulb, you can get a, a whole new plant, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know. And then as you guys probably saw, I, I have gotten like five or six Signo keys from SVO in the past year. And, you know, those aren't small plants either. So, yeah. um, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. When but, you say you keep watering, uh, do you mean with fertilizer or just pure water? Um, it's, sometimes I will, it's not very intentional, but like if I have, uh, if I'm watering my collection, I will, and there's fertilizer in it. I mean, I'll still put it on there. I won't water the center of the pot. I'll water like the four corners of it. So water kind of drips through the four corners of it, but not through the, the middle of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would say overall, there's a decrease in water and a decrease in fertilizer, but I don't, I don't stop completely until it, like I said, when the when all the flowers are completely bloomed out, that's when it's like, okay, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna worry about watering this guy anymore. So, yeah, that's unfortunate that uh, that it's like you know, tomorrow or the next almost day there, would be yeah, perfect well, for judging. Well, and that's the thing, uh, the Kansas, the Great Plains judging center is in kansas which is a nine hour drive from where i live and they're judging next weekend so if i was really ambitious i would throw it in the car don't ask me how i would drive nine hours with that in the car without breaking something but yeah. you know i could take it there but but the for this grex there's one in the judging system that got a certificate of cultural merit mm -hmm. it had 137 nice. flowers so they told me that with 87, it's not even eligible for a cultural award. So I was like, okay, well, yeah. if the judge, if, when, the, when the chair of the judging committee tells me that I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it, there's a lot of autonomy in the judging system. And, uh, you know, all of us judges kind of look at what the other judges do and we kind of scratch our heads sometimes like, cause we wouldn't do it that way. You know, uh -huh. um, yeah, and that's one wrong. benefit of going to a different judging center. It's like they might look at it totally differently, right? Because yeah. the one in the system that's awarded with the CCM, it's more of like a cloesia form. Mm -hmm. Like they're real small and close together and, and, and real close to the bulbs. And these, you know, these, these inflorescences are like 40 centimeters long, right? So it's like, it's, it's kind of almost apples and oranges in the same, within the same grec. So I don't know how they, how they deal with something like that. Yeah, it's all it's all subjective and and judges being judgmental, you know. Um, so, um, but yeah, I think I think I think that that's an easy AM for me. You think so? Um, I, I bet you'll get over a hundred blooms next year. Yeah, each bulb puts out about forty. So if uh, I got two, I got two bulbs this year. So if I got two again next year, or even three, I, who knows? It'd be, it'd be monstrous. Yeah. But just, yeah, going back to culture real fast, these things, these are some of the easiest plants I have in my collection. I mean, six months out of the year, I'm not 
doing anything to them. You know, the hardest thing is just figuring out a place to put them so they don't, so the spikes can extend, you know? I think that group really is one of the most forgiving types of orchids. And, uh, you know, I, I know Dimitri had some, some fun things happen to his plant this summer and it's beautiful now. I do have it now. Yeah. Are you having it with you? Oh, uh, nice. You Look at that. Yeah. Um, it's fun, really. Uh, it's my first real year growing these, but I'm looking forward to the massive bulbs that this can put out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, I mean, it, it looked pretty rough after it got scorched this summer. And man, oh, look yeah, at it I now. This Looks great. This was the biggest bulb, and this one is pretty much toast, but it's not completely mushy. So I'm living it be. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. Are you, now, are you still watering that? um it's under the lid so yeah i'm still watering it and it, it it keeps plumping up really visibly i wouldn't be able to say how much i'm fertilizing but yeah it, it's keep it, it keeps going so yeah well you might get some spikes on it yeah i hope and I hope not at the same time because as you <laughs> said space is a You're this big yeah <laughs> Each yeah <one> it's big <laughs> But yeah, yeah you'll find, happy. I'm happy. You'll find some you'll find somewhere to put it for sure. Yeah. Not sure if judging centers would be nice to such a plant now. I, I really don't know if there's a, a scene for these calacine cal in in Europe. But yeah, it's very I'm looking forward to it. It seems like that's a tremendous opportunity in Europe because every time I post pictures of my Rebecca Northern or of this or of my uh, Signoches, like Europeans are always like, those are so far, to, so far, mm -hmm. uh, so hard to find here. You know, and I'm just like, why isn't someone jumping on that? I mean, there seems to be a demand and they're not hard to grow and propagate, you know, so. I don't know. We have the very famous clones like the, the black ones, uh, uh -huh. obviously, Millennium the Magic name. and uh, yes, After Dark, yeah. and exactly, yeah, and kind of a few Sakunokis as well. The, the ones from Taiwan that were cloned, but aside from that, there's not much. Surprisingly, wow. as you say, not much. It's interesting. There, there, there's some. There's some. There's some, a small but passionate group in in Germany that that that, that do a lot. Um, They're working on them, and they they do a lot with um, imports. Actually, they they do. Uh, Florali imports, Bella Vista, um, and I, I think Schwartner actually has some 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 catacetums that come in as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's not it's not a big group. I mean, you can imagine. I mean, so far north, you know, they're hot growing plants. I think That's they true. take up a lot of space uh, for the for the ordinary windowsill grower. It's a uh, it's a it's, commitment. It's tricky, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's rewarding. It's certainly something that is out of the grocery store plant, and <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah. look very cool. They, they smell very good. Yeah, yeah, they they take a lot of boxes for sure, and yeah, they're not they're not super difficult. I've had a lot of people ask me. You know, they've said I've had mine for three or four years, and it grows great, but it doesn't bloom. And my answer would only have to be it it. I can only imagine that it's a light issue. I literally cannot imagine anything else. If the plant looks good and you've got roots and you've got growths, but it's not blooming. I mean, do you guys have any other ideas what, what, besides a light issue? 99% of the time, time, it's lights. So, but don't, I feel that if you gave too little light, they would bloom, but as male? That, that so th there's a couple factors. that's the thing because this is a you know this one is not a uh, what do you call it a dioecious or whatever like it's not sexually it, dimorphic yeah it's, it's these perfect are perfect flowers, flowers so mm -hmm. but yeah so you know early on there was there was the thought that male flowers come under shady conditions mm -hmm. and the thinking is that you know it takes a lot of resources to grow a pod but not so much for male flowers so a, a plant getting a lot of light can grow a pod and will grow a pod. Um, and, and there's some truth to that, but really what it comes down to is the health of the plant, a bigger plant 
that's more healthy is going to throw females typically. Mm -hmm. And then a smaller plant or a younger plant will typically throw male flowers. And one of the the chats that I did with Fred Clark, uh, he, he, he said the same thing. In fact, when, when you listen to him talking about catacetums in the societies, he'll say, your, your catacetums will reward you with great culture by throwing unattractive female flowers. So to get around that, you kind of, you can either stress them or you chop them. And he chops his every three years so that he can get male flowers. Um, because he's a breeder. So he has to get the cycle of female and male. And exactly. It's a bit tricky for him. Yeah. 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 So whereas, you know, hobby grower, you know, they can get, they prefer male flowers. Although I, I on Sicknikes, I actually prefer a lot of the time the female flowers. Yeah, the female ones on yours were fantastic. Yeah, it was a Cooper Cooper guy, right? Yeah, yeah, that very nice, real bronzy orange. But uh, you know, for the catacetums, I, I think you get these female flowers that are sort of these green hooded goblins, and people get those, and they're all upset. And you know, I mean, you got an award on one of the females, so it's not that bad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's um, a different kind of beauty, but they're still beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and actually, you know, my next goal is to get um, Green Denali awarded on male flowers so that I have an award on both the female and the male. And um, it doesn't happen very often, but I think Mark Margolis in Florida has one or two where he's he's gotten that, which is really cool. And the I was male looking... flowers on this Green Denali are absolutely amazing, I think. They're huge, 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 huge. The, I looked at green. I looked at uh, Fong Sing in the Orchid Pro, and another one has been awarded for female flowers. So I don't know. There's only one Fong Sing that's been awarded for male flowers, I think. So, and and yours is better for sure. So yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, I have to look that up. I I've, I've forgotten that there's another female award for Fong Sing. It, it's a cool one. Well. Zoom's telling me I got six minutes left. So do we, uh, is there anything else we want to chat about on, on these topics or, or anything else? I mean, it's hard to know on this, but because when I have cultural con, con, cultural interrogations, I just send them to you via chat. So yeah. yeah. And I actually, you know, I, I encourage everybody watching this to, to, to reach out as well to, to any of us um and ask about you know obviously dimitri's he's got the foul thing down and um william and i and actually all three of us are growing catacetums and and, and doing pretty well with it so you know we, we've got some insight there to to provide so i'm great catacetum just one yeah but boy does it look good <laughs> yeah yeah uh you're it'll getting, be a, it's a good nice. one to grow yeah i mean you did the heavy lifting and just had to Keep it alive, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, I uh, want to wish everybody out there a good weekend. And um, I hope everybody's having a great growing season and a great holiday season coming up. That's right. And, uh, so close already, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost next year. All right, right. Well, thanks for having us, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you, Talk guys. You See you. Bye.